Yeah, it is. I think that we're sort of we're one of the we're sort of like one of, if not the first generations, to really feel the full brunt of the increased tuition fees. Like my my sis my sister was my sister went to uni in 2010, so she was there for a year before the tuition fees got increased. It was it was three thousand up to nine thousand in 2011. Um, and what happened there was uh, sort of there was, there was massive like student outpouring, but ultimately the momentum wasn't really carried forward. So people just sort of take paid education as sort of like a given at this point. No one really wants to do anything about it um, outside of like on the, the Labour Party leadership. Um, so is that why you um, you're involved in this? You want the momentum to keep going? Yeah, exactly. Um, we're because Leicester's been Leicester has a reputation as quite a sort of like neutral or, or like the word apolitical has been thrown around a lot. Um, but Leicester has a reputation of being somewhere that doesn't really have that much political agitation on campus. Um, so you know, obviously, we're here trying to change that. Yeah, and not just sort of. Not not just to get our immediate sort of demands met, but also we want to sort of build up a movement on campus that can push for change in the university. So, um, what's your opinion on being reimbursed for any time loss? Um, well, I mean, I heard that King's College London earlier today said that they would be reimbursing students to issue they would be setting up a system for that and ultimately i think it just defeats the point of all of these protests altogether because we've been like like we said we're protesting against fees if we're telling universities that we're okay with being treated like customers then it's just going to encourage them to treat us like customers even more Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like, like justifiably a lot of people have been disillusioned by student politics in the past sort of like 10, 20 years. Um, sort of like people are generally sort of dissatisfied with the work of the NUS, which in, uh, which in like several cases is quite important work but the majority of people don't really feel like it affects them in any concrete way. Whereas the strikes have been a really good way to sort of like bring out, bring all of those sort of tensions that have been underlying. It brings them to the surface and people go, oh, there are actually problems at the university and there are things we can do about them and there are people we can stand with. One of the key things we've been trying to do with this is to sort of, while making this particular occupation student-led, we've been trying to... Um, We've been trying to make sure that we build a broad coalition um, because, you know, it's not just staff that are being screwed, students are being screwed, the security are being screwed, cleaners are being screwed. Like last year, there were, a, like for the past sort of few years or so, there have been huge amounts of uh, strikes and demonstrations against um, pay cuts to uh, cleaning staff and layoffs down in London. What are you hoping to achieve occupying outside this corridor as a group? Well, we I mean we have we have we have a set of demands um, partly out of necessity um, because you know you don't you don't want to go into an action without sort of like a set of things that you want you don't just want to sort of like sit around and go why are we here? Um, but sort of like a big thing that we want that hasn't like been set out explicitly in the demands many because we can't ask management for it is that we want this to be a prominent political action on campus and something that will rally people to the cause and it already has i mean we've had sort of like staff and people who like originally sort of like said that they wouldn't be able to come people have come now that we've managed to set up how long have you guys been preparing to occupy the building um oh god you don't have to say specifically yeah yeah um, it no, it's it's convincing? been. It didn't it didn't take very much convincing. We sort of knew people who would be down for it, and sort of like suggested that like if you if you happen to know people that might be interested, then sort of like you know get them involved. So what types of uh, students do you think are here? Are they mainly social students, or they come from different backgrounds? They, they a lot a lot of them come from different backgrounds because a lot of the um, 
I was, I was discussing this yesterday with someone that the left on campus at the moment tends to be because in some places like Warwick the left the, the left movements there have tended to be like already established anarchist organizations um, that um, have and they've sort of like recruited people from sort of other creeds whereas this is mainly sort of like I mean I'm one of maybe like a couple of like you know communists here whereas the majority of them are sort of like you know Corbyn momentum supporters um, and we're just sort of hoping that we can build sort of a broad coalition amongst a lot yeah. of people with the same interests and beliefs. Yeah. It's interesting how um, students have gotten so involved with this mm. as well because people would originally think it's just the teachers who are affected. Yeah. So how personally have you been affected by the strike? Well, I mean, I've been... Um, well, a lot of... A lot of my seminars have been uh, cancelled. I mean, I wasn't going to go to them anyway because I was. Are you at? Yeah, on I, I, like no uni on strike days. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've I've been out on the pickets. It's been sub zero temperatures. I've gotten ill. I've got a cold at the moment. Um, and oh yeah, I've got a cold. I'm the great socialist hero. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, it's, on, it's on your will, isn't it? It's voluntary. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yeah, um, like absolutely doing that out of sort of a desire for like solidarity and building that movement. Um, but like one of them, it, it'll affect me in the future because I'm pl I'm planning to go into academia. Um, so essentially, their pensions are my pensions. Um, yeah, and likewise, it's not just people that are going to go into academia, it's people that are going to go into other sort of, like, I know this isn't like technically a public service anymore, but like, people that go into other public services or things that are government regulated, they're going to have a tax on their pensions. It's like, they, they came for the junior doctors, now they're coming for lecturers, we don't know who they're going to go for next, but they're definitely going to go for someone else. Targeting a... People who are quite in vulnerable positions as well. Yeah, exactly. Because one of the one of the biggest issues with uh, university staff is casualisation. In that, a lot of them aren't really on sort of. A lot of them tend to float in this sort of like nether region of contracts where they're not really sort of that embedded um, into a sort of like secure employment. And it's the same with junior doctors because they've been they're a set they're in a very sort of precarious position themselves so they they do deliberately target the weakest yeah. so you believe that obviously by striking and taking part you're fighting for security more than anything yeah it's a, i mean essentially it's a defensive measure yeah. um obviously we want to we want to take the fight to them but the strikes are primarily a defensive measure they're they're a reaction against what UUK has initiated. What change are you expecting to see from all of this? Well, we're hoping to see Leicester sort of form a, if not, if not a large, because we're trying to be realistic, but like a secure and well-established radical community. Um, and I mean, obviously we'd love to get concessions from management um, and we'll stay as long as we can. <laughs> Um, but yeah, honestly, it's it's difficult to tell at the minute. Thank you very much. Cool. No problem.